have you seen rankings evolve and yeah. their impact on, on business schools and on society? Well, Dan, I'm the first to admit I created a monster, and the monster is uncontrollable. Uh, the monster roams the earth um, doing all kinds of um, damage um, to many schools. Uh, what kind it, of damage? Just yeah, I, I, I think that there are a lot of great schools who, um, who don't get to be ranked mm -hmm. and who deliver high quality education uh, and yet do it under the radar because what rankings have done is put such a focus on a hundred schools. And it's almost as if all the other schools don't exist. And that's a bad thing. Because the truth of the matter is that the basics of um, uh, MBA education are fairly commoditized. And uh, you'll get the basics in accounting, finance, operations, strategy, uh, organizational behavior at any school. And uh, will some be better than others? Of course. Um, but by and large, the differences won't be that great. So, to one extent, rankings are not helpful because they propagate this myth that if you can't get into a top 100 school, you shouldn't go to and get an MBA or any degree. Uh, on the other hand, one of the things um, that makes a ranking good is it is a third party evaluation, uh, however flawed, of uh, an MBA program or a Master's of Management program or an Executive Education program. Uh, or many others, because we're, everything is ranked under the sun today. <laughs> you know, it's unbelievable. I mean, back in 1988, when I created the Business Week ranking, there were no regularly published rankings of business schools anywhere, ever. Now, did you have a computer by then? I hope. I did have a computer. I had a Mac, <laughs> and I got to tell you that I literally printed out the surveys uh, on my printer. I folded them on paper. I put them in envelopes, licked the stamps, and sent them out to thousands of students and, um, and, the, and the schools themselves. And then when they came back, I literally had to uh, input all that data. There were 35 questions in the original uh, graduate uh, survey. 35 questions. They all had to be inputted into a data sheet and into a computer. I did all of that. It was a labor of love. I had to convince my employer at the time, Business Week, that this was a worthy project mm -hmm. and something that I thought was really important. And why did I think it was important? I'll tell you why. Because in every journalist, there's a little bit of a reformer. Now, most journalists realize after three to five years, you reform nothing, and therefore they quit and they go into public relations or communications because they make a lot of money. I didn't know that. Yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah. But, but the reformer in me said uh, a couple of things. Business schools believe in markets. So I want to create a real market where there's information that people can act on uh, because there is no market without information. And at the time, you know, there was uh, no internet in 1988 and there was very little information other than what you would get in a brochure from a single school. So there wasn't a lot of comparative data uh, among and between the different programs that was readily available to the public. And so I also wanted to create uh, something that uh, created proprietary data. Uh, right. So it's easy enough to get, you know, average GMATs, average GPAs, acceptance rates, uh, or outcomes on starting salaries and employment data. Uh, but what I wanted was something that wasn't collected, which was the opinion of the companies that hired the MBAs and saw their track records in their own companies. And I wanted the opinions of the graduates fresh out of the experience in terms of uh, how well did it deliver on what your expectations were. Uh, were the faculty accessible? Uh, what was the quality of the faculty in relationship to what you experienced in your undergraduate years? Uh, was the knowledge in different fields um, to your, um, to, at least in your perspective, was it leading edge or cutting edge? Uh, how well did the career management uh, office prepare you for the marketplace? Right, right, right. How valuable uh, have you uh, experienced the alumni network? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, I mean, all the essentials of what you'd expect from a professional school. And so we were gathering data that had never been gathered before and putting it into the marketplace to make the market really work is the way I saw it. 
and why I thought there was a disconnect between what the market wanted and what the business schools were producing back in the late 80s was there would be survey after survey which would show that companies were very happy with the technical skills of the MBAs they hired, but very unhappy with the interpersonal skills. Well, it sounds like it was uh, pretty innovative and influential back in the, the early the, days, but why, yeah. why do you call it a monster now? Well, it's a monster because everyone has decided to, to rank schools. Uh, there is no perfect way to really rank uh, business schools or any schools. So what you have is a lot of imperfect and flawed methodologies. Some of them are frankly, you know, journalistically mindless where people are measuring things that have nothing to do with quality and may even have to do with political correctness. So yeah, I, I think I created the monster back in 1988 when I uh, put together the first Business Week ranking of business schools. And it's a monster because most of the methodologies are flawed, they're imperfect, they're even intellectually dishonest. Yet, I think over time, um, and over the span of all the rankings, there is a greater truth that emerges. And we do try to get at that truth at Poets and Quants by merging together the five most influential rankings to come up with a, with, a, with a ranking that diminishes the anomalies that would occur in any one ranking uh, and builds on the consensus that comes from all five. Um, there is no perfect way to rank business schools. Um, no one will ever be happy with this, um, but it's provided a lot of helpful information to applicants in the marketplace that they otherwise wouldn't have.